strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to XML Lex. As you can see, I'm joined today by my husband, Brendan. Hello again. Today we want to talk about an interesting concept that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, aka the Mormon Church, changes what it requires of members based on how the members react. Which is contrary to what most members believe and think, and they think that the changes come from God and the prophet talking to God, but when you actually look at the history and the data, it's pretty obvious that the changes happen because people either complain about it or don't or, like it. Yeah, or they simply don't follow don't do whatever it. rule has been put in place. So I did a little poll on Twitter, actually I did several polls on Twitter to find out how people felt about certain commandments or prophetic guidance. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you guys up on the screen each of these polls, and keep in mind, these polls have been going for like a day and they're set to go for seven days, so when this video comes out, if you go look at them, they will probably be a little bit different than they are right now. But I'm gonna put screenshots of right now up on the screen. I'm gonna read whatever the rule or guidance is to Brendan, and he's gonna say from a one to 10 scale, how important he thinks this rule is. And then we're gonna compare it to what everybody said. Here's how the polls go. Thread with questions for Mormons or former Mormons. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being most important, how important is following each of these commandments slash prophetic guidance? If you're not LDS anymore, try to answer how you would have when you were a member. First one, no coffee or tea. That was like a nine, 10 for me. You are in the majority, 41% say between eight and 10. 41%, 41%? that's really low. Here's what it looks like. I'll put the figures up on the screen so you guys can see. I find these fascinating, to be the honest. The one to three is almost the second highest. Yeah. Wow. A few decades ago, it was a really big deal. Yeah. And people like, I mean, I grew up thinking that coffee and alcohol were on the same level because that's how horrible. much it was pushed that yeah. it was like really, really sinful. And today, when I get on TikTok and I get comments from a lot of people that are in Gen Z, they're like, it doesn't really matter. Like I drink coffee all the time. I love a chai latte. Like they act like it's no big deal. Hey, but that's not what the prophet said. It's not what the prophet said. And it's in the word of wisdom. It and, still is in there. Right. And it's it's in the temple recommend interview questions that you follow the word of, word of wisdom. Ugh, the word of wisdom. Um, but that's one that I think a lot of the younger generation do not care about. See, this is funny because people gave us crap for leaving about not following <laughs> and everything. We followed that to the letter of the law. Oh, absolutely. And tried with everything else, and it's just comical to me that like, the prophet has said it, it's still in your doctrine, so why are you even in the church? Get out, <laughs> follow it or don't. Let's do the second one, tithing, 10% tithe. That one was also a nine to 10 for me. There were times where we would pay that first, even when we probably shouldn't have because we couldn't afford to. That's true. 67% say it's an eight to a 10. Okay, that one's higher. Yeah. Um, that one should be lower. The church doesn't need any more money. <laughs> the church doesn't need more money. I personally would have ranked that a 10 um, as in a matter of importance. Like to yeah. me, paying tithing was one of the most important ones to follow. Now I look at it, of course, and I'm like, the church absolutely does not need your money. Nope. Um, but a lot of people say it's about the principle. I'm surprised it's not higher, to be honest. However, I have, that's another one that when high. I talk about tithing and how it's, you know, a requirement in the church, I've had pushback on TikTok from Mormons being like, it's not a requirement. It is. It is. You can't go to the temple and yeah. get into the celestial kingdom without paying tithing. Yep. Wait. All right, number three, <laughs> tattoos. That was another nine to 10, <laughs> but I really, really wanted one. Yeah, I would have probably rated it like an eight or a nine. When I high end. In. Yeah, definitely high end. We are again in the majority, but this time it's only a 36%. Wow. It's not that surprising because again, this is another one where the church- The younger generation. Yeah, the younger is... generation is like, uh, God doesn't care if I get a tattoo. I do think it's very interesting. This is another one of those ones that like, it's been counseled against by prophets multiple, multiple times. Yeah. If you go to, you know, just go to Google and search Mormons tattoos or LDS tattoos. And I guarantee you one of the first things to come up will be a page from the church talking about how we counsel our members against getting tattoos. Um, so it's still very much, you know, it's on the church's website. It's part of- Still part of the it, doctrine. It's not like 
doctorate. I guess it de depends on how you define doctrine. Uh, I define it as part of the doctrine. Because, I mean, if you define doctrine as what the prophet counsels, um, as a prophet, like what he speaks over the pulpit or what the church we publishes. We were taught that that was just as valid as scripture. So right. So, I mean, if you doctrine. count that as doctrine, then yes. But again, a lot There's of... There's the whole argument of he was speaking as a man this time, though. Like, where do you draw the line? Yeah. It's one of those things that I think as more and more young people um, start to be in charge in the church, I think it's one of those ones that's going to kind of fade and that they're going to talk less about. Number four, modest clothing. It was still like an eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I probably would have also said the same thing. Still in the majority, 43% say eight to 10. The prophets have never stopped talking about this nope. one. Um, and even though, you know, this was one I think I, they still talk about quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And even though more younger members of the church are just going, yeah, I don't care. Like God won't judge me for wearing a tank top. You know, all of the prophets and apostles are still, you know, geriatric at this point. Um, and their views on it are much more conservative. Yeah, but again, it's still in the strength of youth. It's still being taught by prophets. Yeah. It's still doctrine. And number five, wearing garments. That one was a 10 because, yep. <laughs> because if you didn't wear them, then I mean, that's a serious violation of Your covenants. temple covenants, which apparently a lot of people just don't seem to get. It would be interesting to do this same poll like on TikTok where there are more young people as opposed to, I think my audience on Twitter is older. Yeah. It was 73% said eight to 10. So that's the highest number we've had so far. And I think that- Because it's a temple covenant. Yeah, it's a temple covenant. So it's seen as a lot more serious. However, when I talk about that on TikTok to a younger audience, they act yeah, like I'm it's sure insane that I think that garments are important or that I thought that they were when I was a member. They act like, these, that these, doesn't matter. You don't have to wear those. You don't have to use them every day. Okay, and so I'm like, these, are these kids that haven't been through the temple yet? Because possibly, yes. <laughs> that's, um, you guys are wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, but the You're funny wrong. thing is, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I grew up, uh, my parents always wore garments. Always. Always. When they were in bed, they were wearing garments. Like always. that was their pajamas. And so I was very used to seeing them. And you know, when I did laundry, there were garments. And I've seen with some of these younger people being like, no, you don't wear them every day. And I'm like, maybe your parents are not like. Your parents are probably not. Following their covenants. I don't know. <laughs> active. Um, or care as much, but. Yeah. This is another one though that in the church, it's still seen as very, very important. Um, and I guess we'll see as the younger generation comes along if once they go through the temple they see that covenant and you know hold it in a higher regard. It's taught in the temple as there's no leniency. Right. It's day and night you wear the garments except for a very select few activities like the swimming pool. Yeah. However, I think that they have changed up the wording so it's no longer day and night. Oh, yeah, figure that. Which is interesting. And I think a lot of people have kind of taken as like, I don't have to worry that, about it as much. Did that change come from God or because less people <laughs> want to wear them? Who knows? I know. But number six, so no <laughs> swear words. <laughs> that one, not as important, no. What would you say? What would you say? See, I would still say the importance of it was like an eight to a 10, but I didn't follow it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't that important. What's yeah, I'd say like because I still let it slip every once in a while, even when I was a member, I, I don't know, would give it like a five to six. Okay, uh, you are kind of in the majority. The majority is four to five with 30%. The lowest is eight to 10 with 16%. Wow. Because <laughs> nobody cares, like nobody follows that. Um, and I guess that's not entirely true. Like my side of the family. Oh yeah, your parents, well. I mean. So my dad likes to say balls. My um, parents swore. Yeah, his family, all of them swear and have and do. I feel like especially younger generation coming in, they all swear. They don't care about not swearing. They don't see it as important. They don't see it as, you know, a commandment. Most um, of them probably. Yeah, and maybe they see it as guidance, but they don't really listen to it. And as you can see by this poll, they don't think it's that important. Pretty sure it's still talked about by prophets though. It probably is, you know, not to be profane, but I think this is one that, you know, in the next 20 to 30 years, it's gonna be completely they're gone. not really gonna talk about it yeah. anymore. Number seven, no R-rated movies. That one I'd say like a six to seven. 
I definitely watched some in college. We watched some when we first were married. I saw it as very like, like we were being naughty though. Yeah, but I'd still say a six to seven because it was like, oh, I feel kind of naughty, but it also wasn't that, it didn't feel like that big of a deal to me. This is the first one you're not in the majority on. Hmm. The majority is one to three, 33%. Surprise because nobody cares anymore. You just want to watch TV and yeah, there's been uh, Prophets and Apostles throughout the years that have brought this up among you know other things They talk a lot about appropriate media. So it's not just movies, but it's you know video games books TV music, music. Um, There's a lot of different media forums that they talk about uh, And the R-rated movie thing I believe was first brought up by Ezra Taft Benson I think so. Let me check really quick. We counsel you, young men, not to pollute your minds with such degrading matter, for the mind through which this filth passes is never the same afterwards. Don't see R-rated movies or vulgar videos or participate in any entertainment that is immoral, suggestive, or pornographic. Don't lose, listen to music that is degrading. Um, and that was really picked up on by members of the church um, ever since that talk was given. R-rated movies were off limits. Another apostle named Elder Cree L. Crawford of the 70s said, What difference does it make why it, why it is rated R? The fact is, a prophet of God said not to go to R-rated movies. That ought to be enough. That was in 1998. Um, and, you know, if you look it up, this stuff is still on the church's website. And I think it's interesting... Um, you know, and it's a conversation that you could have, like, if it's still on the church's website, if it's still, you know, still up there, doctrine. does that mean that they are saying that, like, this is what we believe? Yep. Or is it outdated and they just haven't removed it? Yeah, I think as long as it's still up on the church's website, it's still doctrine. It was said by a prophet. It's currently displayed as what they believe and should be followed. I think that if the church doesn't want the members or, you know, doesn't think the members have to follow a certain guidance anymore, they should update the website. And if they don't want to remove it, at least put something that says or like, say it publicly. this is outdated and we don't really believe this anymore. Here's what we believe instead. Because otherwise you're going to have members that are going back and forth and like some that are believing it really they strongly and do. some that are not. Yes. On everything. <laughs> As you can see by the extreme differences of opinion in these polls. There's such a gray area from like commandment to commandment that like there's so much unsurety yeah. obviously between which honestly is a problem with how the apostles and the prophets have governed the church mm -hmm. because especially I would say like Joseph Fielding Smith until like Gordon B. Hinckley there were a lot of prophets that focused so heavily on very specific little arbitrary things that you're not allowed to do like getting multiple piercings or fishing on Sunday yeah like random little things that just don't matter that much and like do you really think that God cares about this little teeny tiny thing basically they're just getting the members to focus really really heavily on like little tiny things that never come up in the scriptures or you know are seemingly that important but they were having like making entire talks giving entire talks across general conference to the entire world you know all the Mormons about things that are like is that that important though and if they hadn't heavily focused on those things and instead been like, yeah, like the Lord doesn't really care about if you get a second piercing in your earlobe, but he does care about loving your neighbor. Um, he does care about giving to the poor. He does care about being charitable and kind. Like those things are the things that they should have been focusing on. And instead a lot of them just were like, <laughs> no, face cards are bad, which is just ridiculous. Number eight, law of chastity. 10. 10, yep. And 86% of the people who took the it's poll the agree with the only one that we still cling on to. <laughs> um, and only 3% of the vote was one to three. So you few are just horny. <laughs> <laughs> the church is really explicit on this one. They Very. call it the sin next to murder, so you know it's bad. Um, and it's one that they haven't lightened up on mm -hmm. at all. Um, so it's not really surprising to me to see it so high up there as a really, really important sin that you should not do. All right, number nine, keeping the Sabbath day holy. This in our family was a 10, but I feel like most people are probably going to be somewhere in like the three to five range. What would, you, if you, when you were a Mormon, how would you have rated it? I would have said like a six or seven because like my parents were very strict about it, but I didn't like that. <laughs> so 
you are in the majority. 42% says between six and seven. What I find especially interesting about this one in particular is that it's one of the Ten Commandments <laughs> to keep the Sabbath day holy. Yeah. And yet it's not that important to most people. Um, and I wonder like, why is that? Is it because it's like, because people want, it's a weekend. Yeah, people want to like, be social. You want to go out and eat. You want to go out with friends. You, you want to do stuff. Want so. vacation, all of the things. I think that's really interesting though. I don't know how much they really talk about that anymore. I think that a big part of it is like, this has always been kind of one that's like dependent on your family. Like there are a few things that the church says to do or not do but then a lot of it is like up to the way your family ran. Even though it is surprising, it's in the Ten Commandments, you would think it's more important. A lot of people don't really care about, and I think that's one that's gonna kind of fade a little bit. It'll still be like, there's certain things you shouldn't do, but I think those things have scaled back and back and back as the years have gone on, and I think they'll continue to do so. Where do, where do they think murder? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't bother with that one because I knew what everybody would say. Or at least what everybody should say. So you're right. I'm kind of worried now. <laughs> Number 10, multiplying and replenishing the earth. That's a big 10 right there. Yeah. You gotta make all the babies so that all those babies can grow up and make money and give that money to the church. It's almost like they planned it that way. However, it's not the majority. Good. The majority is actually a tie between one and three and four and five. Excellent. 27 percent of the vote. But I think it's fascinating that it's not higher up on people's radar because it's again it's a thing in the Bible. It's a thing it's a the church big has like so like over I mean they, and this is again they don't really push this that hard anymore. But they did. I big remember growing time. up hearing like do not wait to have kids as soon as Multiply you're old enough the earth. like marry a return missionary and start having kids and don't yeah. wait that was like the whole thing get married and have kids get yeah. married and have kids be a family like the family is central you have to have a lot of it kids. was a huge i mean that was like one of the biggest things yeah growing up but now not so much and i don't think they push it very hard That's anymore good though i think this is one that you know in 20 to 30 years no, yeah, it will they're be not going to talk very, about it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a thing of the past. And the people, you know, the young people in the church today, I don't think are hearing this message at all or even know that the church used to push it so hard. Probably not. Number 11, no alcohol. That was a 10 for me personally. I was like, I'm never going to touch that or drugs or anything. Never yeah. in my life. That was important. And <laughs> this one's funny to me. But yeah, in the majority, 85%, 8 to 10. And yeah, like oh, that staunch on alcohol, <laughs> but not tattoos. Like not they kind of go hand in hand, the guys. Stay holy. And, like all this stuff goes hand in hand. I just like, think it's hilarious it's that keeping the Sabbath day holy and multiply and replenish the earth are not eight to ten, but alcohol is like. <laughs> you guys are hyper fixating on the wrong things. And it's funny, but too, coffee and tea are fine. Yeah, coffee and tea aren't even close. What was the percentage on that one? Like Forty-one percent. They're in the same scripture that this <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's not reading the entire scripture, are they? It's just funny. It is it's funny. It's just funny. Uh, we'll see how that one fares in the next 20 years. Yeah, when you start walking out of this religion, you realize how much of it is really just pick and choose. <laughs> All right, these next couple um, I added like really close to, like probably just a few hours ago, so they haven't had as much time to get votes. If you watch this the day it comes out, these polls will probably still have like 24 to 48 hours left. So if you want to go vote on them, you can. Number 12 is no gambling. Seven to eight. I, that's just not one that I even like thought about or came across ever really in my life. But it was also something that like if I was presented with it, I would have been like, no. That's evil. Yeah. This one was eight to 10, 37%. So not a huge majority there. Um, All the old people that are still left. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it's not like, this is not really talked about that much in church anymore because- Hardly ever. It's, I mean, I heard it, but it wasn't like- I heard it pushed, more like, when I was coffee. like, I heard it more when I was like a child. Yeah, that one is one that the church used to talk about a lot. It was one of those things that several prophets like really hyper fixated on and like made into an absolutely huge deal, wrote sermons about it. Because again, they want your money. <laughs> That's now, what it is. 
<laughs> it's, it's not really talked about and it's not that oh, serious. God. Number 13, finding fault with the Lord's anointed. That would have been a big 10 for me too. Yeah. Like how Same. dare you speak anything against the prophet? This one, eight to 10, 55%. So, you know, still pretty high up there, but not as high as I would expect as somebody yeah. who grew up in the church and would have said that one's a 10. Because again, it would be like a temple recommend interview question. It's funny that that's that high, but yet the other polls show that you guys clearly aren't following some of the stuff they're saying. Yeah. Well, maybe I should have also done another one, like just following yeah. the prophet and see where that ended up. Because this is a little bit different, finding fault with them versus which, listening to everything they say. Which should be, the if we did following the prophet, it should be every 100% right. should say but they wouldn't. 8 to 10, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Which is strange. Isn't it? Isn't it so strange? I want to read a few of the comments that I got on this. This uh, comment came from an active member. I feel these questions would be ones Jesus would ask the Sadducees and Pharisees. None of these even compare to the more important teachings of love your neighbor, lift those around you, etc. And I totally see where you're coming from on that. And, you know, like if I were to ask current Mormons instead of the things that I did, if I had put like love your neighbor, of course people are going to say that's a 10. But is that what the church sits and talks about all the time mm -hmm. in general conference? Well, and the other thing is those are not uniquely Mormon teachings. Those are no. all Christianity, and you don't have to be a Christian to teach that either. We're no. atheists. We teach our children that we should love other people and treat them fairly. Yeah. That's not a uniquely Mormon teaching. So it's... No. And I mean, I thought about adding those things to the poll, but I was like, I feel like the only people that would say that is not important would just be fucking around and trying to mess yeah, up the poll. Probably. But I think it's interesting that when you think about the Mormon church from an outsider's perspective, you are not thinking about they teach to love your neighbor. Mm -mm. You're like, oh yeah, they don't drink coffee. Because they emphasize Those that the so heavily. They emphasize things that don't really matter and that like you like this person said Jesus would have been like, why are you so caught up on tattoos? Why are you so caught up on coffee? Love thy neighbor. Yep. I, I just liked this comment and thought it was funny. Once again, laughing that while I'm generally as interesting as boiled chicken, by Mormon standards, I'm an absolute wild man. <laughs> <laughs> I liked this one too. I think it would be interesting to see pre versus post endowment opinions. As a youth, I had an outlook of God just wants us to do our best and would have ranked everything lower. And I agree with that, um, especially yep. like the garments. I would have ranked probably lower before going through the temple and like actually doing those yeah, covenants. Yeah, you have not, you're not literally, you're literally not allowed to hear yeah, the ceremony that are. goes on in the temple. This person asked, are we answering these based on how stressed we felt these commandments were or how much we actually gave a shit about slash followed them? And the reason that I thought this was interesting is because I, I didn't say one way or the other on this. I was just leaving it up to a person's interpretation on purpose because it is so different for every person. There are Mormons who are really serious about following certain rules that others just do not care about at all. Like, for example, my grandma and grandpa would never say a swear word. It would not happen. Okay. But his family and all, his grandparents? All the time. All the time. Yeah. Any of them. And people would like giggle. Hee hee hee. Hee hee hee. She said the F word. Hee hee hee. And it would be like funny to them and they don't care. Oh. So you see like for some Mormons, some of these things are incredibly important. And like Irony sacred. abounds. And for others, it doesn't matter at all. Mormon <laughs> quote tweeted the, you know, the polls and said, participate. The no tattoos thing and the no R-rated movies thing are relics, of course. As that's not been touted for dec over a decade. They're still on the church's website. <laughs> They're still there from prophets. A it's relic? still doctrine. We left the church four and a half years ago. So yeah, it's not it, been that long. It was still it was definitely still a thing. And it was still talked about. Relics? Has the church nuanced that much in four years? I don't think so. But again, those two are things that I think are less heavily focused on. And you can see that reflected in the polls as oh, well. Yeah. But it's not like they've disappeared yet. They're definitely no. still on the church's website. They're still prominent enough that I would say- You're still gonna hear that kind of stuff in like local congregation Definitely talks local, and, yeah. and like fast and testimony meetings and stuff like I, yeah. I, uh, didn't, I decided not to go with my friend to get a tattoo and I just felt so blessed. I think I just think it's really funny. Relics. What a word to use for things that so recently 
I thought were so important. So recently. <laughs> I think you're, uh, I don't know, you just have a very different viewpoint on some stuff. Which is fine. I mean, we all cl clearly, yep. everybody, everybody does. Everybody does. Here's why I think that a lot of these things in the next 20 to 30 years, nobody in the church is going to care about anymore. It's because in decades past, there have been things brought up by prophets, talked about over the pulpit, written in sermons, written in books, published by the church that nobody cares about anymore, that is never talked about anymore, that is just completely, like this other person said, relics of the church. Things that were brought up that the members stopped following or didn't care about to begin with that are now not against the rules. The first one, and the one that I think is very funny, is face cards. Hilarious. The church, for a while there, was really serious about people in the church not playing games with face cards. Any card games, really, were really looked down upon. I'm going to read you a few quotes so it's, you can... It's the appearance of evil because it looks like you're gambling. Well, wait, it gets worse. I'm going to read you some quotes so you can see how serious they were about this. Oh, boy. So Joseph F. Smith, again, one of those guys who had an opinion on absolutely every topic possible and told everybody about it, mm -hmm. he was really fixated on face cards. Here's what he said out of several things that he said about face cards. <laughs> Card playing is an excessive pleasure. It is intoxicating and therefore in the nature of a vice. It is generally the companion of the cigarette and the wine glass and the latter lead to the pool room and the gambling hall. Basically, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> Few indulge frequently in card playing in whose lives it does not become a ruling passion. A deck of cards in the hands of a faithful servant of God is satire upon religion. <laughs> Those who thus indulge are not fit to administer in sacred ordinances. Wow. You played slapjack. You can't pass the sacrament. <laughs> the bishops are charged with the responsibility for the evil, and it is their duty to see that it is abolished. Oh no man who is addicted to card playing should be called to act as a ward teacher. Such men cannot be consistent advocates of that which they do not themselves practice. He felt this way about so many random stupid things. It's not just him. Bruce R. McConkie, this is a long quote, but stick around because it's wild. It follows that if members of the church believe false doctrines, if they accept false educational theories, if they fall into the practices and abominations of the sectarians, if they use tea, coffee, tobacco, or liquor, if they fail to pay an honest tithing, if they find fault with the Lord's anointed, if they play cards, if they do anything contrary to the standards of personal righteousness required by the gospel, then to that extent, they are in personal apostasy and need to repent. <clears throat> May I remind you, all of those polls we just did, a bunch of them were in here and a lot of people don't care about those things anymore. Tea and coffee were not seen as that this serious. This is from a prophet of, the, of God. This is Bruce R. McConkie, who was in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Sounds He's like one a of the lot highest... of you guys need to repent. Right? Like, it, he was so dead serious about this stuff. And again, this was kind of that time period in the church where they really hyperfixated on like little dumb things instead of the overarching picture. He continues. Members of the church should not belong to bridge or other type of card clubs. Oh my God. And they should neither play cards nor have them in their homes. By cards is meant, of course, the spotted face cards used by gamblers. To the extent that church members play cards, they are out of harmony with their inspired leaders. Innocent non-gambling games played with other types of cards, except for the waste of time in many instances, oh my God. are not objectionable. <laughs> waste of time. This was spoken and talked about and made to be very serious by several church leaders. Apostle Dallin H. Oaks, who is still alive today and is next in line to be the prophet of the church. One type of gambling that has been vigorously criticized by leaders, by our leaders, is card playing. Cards may of course be played without playing for money, but the relationship between card playing and gambling is so close, and the practice of card playing itself partakes of so many of the disadvantages of gambling that card playing has come under condemnation regardless of whether or not gambling is involved. He said that in 1972. So while it's old, it's not that old. It's not that old, and he's, he's still, still alive. alive, and he's still <laughs> a prophet of God. I find that hilarious. Spencer W. Kimball, another guy who just had so many opinions. He told members, we hope faithful Latter-day Saints will not use the playing cards which are used for gambling, either with or without the gambling. So as you can see, it was extremely serious, at least in the eyes of the prophets, but I don't know about you, 
I grew up playing faith card yep, games. Never all heard time. of it. Um, I was born in 1993. My family huge into card games. 89, and yeah, um, we played so many card games. We still are. All of my family are Mormon. We all play with face cards, and we always have. And it's never been a thing. I think I didn't hear about like face cards being bad. I didn't until, I until probably, a couple days ago. <laughs> just found out. Yep. Um, I think I heard about it as a teenager. Like, did you know the church used to teach that face cards were bad? And we, oh, haha, ha, that's funny. But it is funny. It is funny that it used to be such a problem. And now nobody cares. Most people don't even know the church ever taught that. If the prophet of God says things like this and then everybody is just like, ah, ignores it, like. It goes away. You ignore it hard enough. Which is a it'll giant go away. <laughs> red flag. The church is not true. I just think it's, it's a fun experiment. All right, another one that I want to talk about that another prophet saw as extremely important and dedicated a big portion of a talk to, but nobody follows anymore, hunting for sport. How many Mormons do you know that hunt for sport? Like 99% of them. <laughs> it's well, some of them, it seems to be their entire personality besides being Mormon. Well, a couple of the prophets had a problem with that. So let's hear about it. Firstly, again, from Joseph Fielding Smith. I never could see why a man should be imbued with a bloodthirsty desire to kill and destroy animal life. I have known men, and they still exist among us, who enjoy what is to them Big the time. sport of hunting birds and slaying them by the hundreds, and who will come in after a day's sport boasting of how many harmless birds they have the skill to slaughter. And day after day during the season when it is lawful for men to hunt and kill, the birds having a, had a season of protection and not uh, apprehending danger, Go out by scores or hundreds, and you may hear their guns in the early morning on the day of the opening, as if great armies had met in battle, and the terrible work of slaughtering the innocent birds goes on. This man was, like, dramatic as fuck. <laughs> Spencer W. Kimball also had something to say on the subject. And not less with reference to the killing of innocent birds is the wildlife of our country that live upon the vermin that are indeed enemies to the farmer and to mankind. It is not only wicked to destroy them, it is a shame, in my opinion. I think this principle should not only should extend not only to the bird life, but to the life of all animals. I don't think 99% of Mormons knew that this was ever a thing or that it was spoken about, no. that, you know, trophy Most hunting or hunt. hunting for sport was not a good thing. Um, I know a lot of Mormons who are prolific hunters, uh, not only for meat, but also for time. sport. It, it's one of those things that people don't listen to. That was, you know, these things were said in general conference or in church publications and people read them and went, ah, mm, don't care about that one. You and I, the average Joe, can alter the teachings of God. There's one more really important one and I'm curious if any of you watching have thought of it yet. Have you thought of it? The thing that is doctrine and in the scriptures but nobody cares about? It's going to be like, go oh, duh, as soon as you say it. But... <laughs> yeah, it is. In the word of wisdom. Oh yeah, the uh, eat meat sparingly eat meat and sparingly. in times of famine. Nobody follows that crap. Nobody follows I'd read that. it. I'd read it in church and be like, "Hmm, we don't do that. We don't do that." <laughs> and I'd ask the teacher, like, "Y'all eat meat all the time. Is that okay? Like, we're not in a time of famine and blah blah blah." And they'd be like, "Oh well, that yeah." yeah. Nobody ever had a really good answer. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah, that's another one that I, I think that eventually people stopped listening to that one and yep. it faded. Meat tastes too good. Um, and nobody, nobody cares. It's no longer a thing. I, I hope you guys got something out of this discussion. I find it just fascinating that there are rules within the Mormon church that these head honchos who you're supposed to be obedient to and follow what they say can make up these things, but if enough people don't care, those things go away. Does that make them a true prophet then? It's something to think about. Does that make the church true? Leave your opinion in the comments. Let us know what you think about this. I find it fascinating, and I know I have um, several people who follow me who are still in the church, so curious what you think about I've it from had, a Mormon perspective. I've had several members tell me that there's a big difference between doctrine and the like, social practices of the church and I'm like these things are doctrine though they're like well following the prophet is supposedly doctrine and a lot of these are prophetic guidance it would not technically be just a social pick and choose thing if this is supposed to be doctrine they've said especially it, the ones that are they like said it with the intent of everybody following that yeah 
especially like really important ones like wearing your garments um yeah no alcohol no coffee no tea uh, things that are like scriptural or are part of the temple ceremony. It's not supposed to be left up to you to pick and choose. It's supposed to be followed to the T. However... And it's funny that my own Mormon family gave us shit for trying to follow all of this stuff to yeah, the T. Yeah, that's true. They did. I think that something we can take from this... Um, it kind of goes back to what that one comment said about like a lot of these come down to like what the Pharisees and Sadducees would say um, and what Jesus would say because a lot of it is just very arbitrary rules that have been brought up by prophets and apostles who clearly had their own agenda and um, I think the one about saying the word Mormon is one of those things yep. that eventually nobody's gonna care about that anymore because it's very much from a prophet who has a specific agenda and has for decades. And when he finally got made prophet, he was like, oh, we're changing that because he cared about it a lot. Just like Joseph Fielding Smith cared a lot about face cards and made it into a rule and now it's gone and nobody cares and nobody even knows it was a thing. I, I think that what that person said about like the most important ones, the ones that Jesus said in the Bible, like love thy neighbor, those are the things that need to be more heavily focused on and not so much these little arbitrary random rules that I don't think that if there was an almighty, all powerful God who created each of us, he's going to care if you drink tea, <laughs> but he might care a whole lot more about you loving those around you and administering to the sick and giving to the poor. Again, I'll make the point you can do that outside the church too, though. Very true. All right, well, thank you guys so much for sticking with us for this. We talked a lot longer than I was planning on, which pretty much always happens when we do these videos together, but how fun Sorry. is it? <laughs> Don't you just love having him here? Thank you guys for watching. Um, special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. An extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Tans, and the Expo Candle Co. for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. If you guys would like to support the channel, there are links to do so in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and a comment. Let us know what you thought of this whole discussion. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.